think that a blind faith, an unexamined faith, is not worth having. And we think that when you examine the evidence, you'll find that Jesus is who he claimed to be. So that's why we do what we do. Um, my thinking uh, in Christian apologetics, like our speaker tonight. I remember coming as a, as a fresh student uh, here to Charlotte, and my very first semester, my very first class, was with Dr. Geisler. And one of the joys of learning is to learn how much you don't know yet. And uh, it's a little unnerving sometimes to see how much there is to know. And uh, anyway, Dr. Geisler has inspired me to think um, carefully about God and about uh, the faith. Dr. Geisler has authored, or co-authored, 79 books and hundreds of articles. He has taught theology, philosophy, and apologetics on the college or graduate level for over 50 years. He has served as a professor at some of the finest university, at the finest seminaries in the USA, including Trinity Evangelical Seminary, Dallas Seminary, and Southern Evangelical Seminary. Tonight, Dr. Geisler uh, is going to speak on the topic, I'd believe the Bible, but if God, why evil? So help me welcome Dr. Norman Geisler. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thanks for coming out uh, tonight. This is one of my favorite uh, topics. Can you hear me in the back? Very good? Great. This is one of my favorite topics, and uh, anyone who's thought anything about reality has to ask the question, uh, if God, why evil? Uh, why the Holocaust, if there's a God? Why tsunamis, if there's a God? Uh, we put it all in the book. There are a few copies in the front here. If God, uh, Why Evil, some time ago. It just won uh, the uh, Book of the Year award in its category uh, from a uh, magazine that uh, rates uh, books on that topic, and uh, we're really happy for that. Uh, there are three basic responses to this question. If God, Why Evil? Uh, pantheism, which affirms God and denies evil, say, yes, there's a God, but evil is not real. Uh, Shankara Hinduism, Christian science, um, evil is just maya, it's just an illusion, it's just a, a zero, it's a nothing, a dream. Atheism, on the other hand, affirms evil and denies God. Uh, it's, it's clear that evil exists, but it's not at all clear that God exists. In fact, uh, the two seem to be incompatible. And then, of course, theism, which says uh, both God and evil exist, and then it struggles to try and explain why uh, that is the case. So let's uh, say uh, a word about each of those before we go into detail here. Christian Science, Mary Baker Eddy wrote Science and Health with Key to Scripture. God is all. Therefore, all that really exists is in and of God. Evil is but an illusion and has no real basis. It's all in your mind. It's not only mind over matter, but matter doesn't even matter. It doesn't even exist. Like a teacher asked his uh, class, what is matter? And one student said, never mind. And so he said, well, what's mind? He said, no matter. Uh, that's uh, what the pantheists uh, say. Uh, someone wrote a poem on it. There was a pantheist of Deal who said that though pain is not real, yet when I sit upon a pin and it punctuates my skin, I dislike what I fancy I feel. So the problem uh, for pantheism uh, is in explaining uh, why does evil seem so real? In fact, uh, where did the illusion come from? Why do we all have it? And uh, why can't we get rid of it? You can usually get rid of it. An illusion, pinch yourself and wake up, as it were, uh, but we can't seem to be get, able to get rid of evil. C.S. Lewis, uh, once an atheist, uh, uh, summarized very well the problem of atheism and evil. He said, my argument against God was that the universe seemed so cruel and unjust. And I started asking myself, how had I got this idea of just and unjust? Man does not call uh, a, a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. Of course, I could have given up my idea of justice by saying it was nothing but a private idea of my own, but if I did that, then my argument against God collapsed too. He said I was in a dilemma. 
um, either I had an objective moral basis for complaining against God or I didn't. If I had an objective moral basis for complaining against God, then there must be an objective moral law, and every moral law has a moral law giver, so that led me right back to God. If I didn't have an objective uh, basis for complaining against God, then it was only my own private idea and was no basis for an argument. Actually, evil cries out for God in three ways. One, to explain how we know it's evil. Uh, how do we know it's not good unless we knew what good was? How do we know uh, it's unjust unless we knew what just was? And if there's a, a moral law that says you ought to be just, then there must be a moral law giver. Secondly, evil cries out for God uh, to comfort us in our sorrow over evil. Nietzsche, the uh, famous, most famous atheist who ever lived, uh, said uh, people like Spinoza have comfort in their uh, sorrow and comfort in their loneliness. Uh, I don't have any whatsoever. He bemoaned the fact. And then finally, uh, how do we know that things are going to get better? Most people believe that they're going to get better, but what grounds do we have? If there is no God, how can we be assured of an ultimate victory over evil? Maybe evil will win in the end. Maybe we'll be on the losing side. So really, evil cries out for God in at least three, three ways. But the problem for a believer in God is this. Uh, God is all good and opposes evil. God is all knowing and he foreknew evil was going to come. God is all powerful and he can defeat evil. Uh, why then does he permit it? Uh, how can an all good, an all knowing, all powerful God, an all good God who opposes it, an all knowing God who foreknew it, an all powerful God who could defeat it, uh, why does evil uh, exist in that kind of universe? I want to try and cover four aspects of the problem tonight uh, the nature of evil. Uh, the origin of evil, the persistence of evil, and the purpose of evil. There are many other aspects, but uh, we can't do it. We uh, do those in the, uh, in the book. First of all, let's talk about the, the nature of evil. What is evil by nature? The problem is this. If God created all things, and if evil is something, it's real, because uh, the theist doesn't believe, as the pantheist, that it's unreal, uh, then God must have created evil. So we're in a real dilemma. If God created everything and evil is something, then uh, God must have created evil. If we want to uh, deny the minor premise, evil is something, uh, uh, we become a pantheist. Uh, and then we have all the problems associated with that. Uh, if on the other hand, we want to say God didn't create all things, then uh, we're in a dualistic uh, universe where God himself is uh, struggling and we don't have a theistic God, we have a a finite God like Plato's Demiurgos or Rabbi Kushner's uh, God who uh, isn't all perfect and isn't all powerful. So it's a serious problem. How, do, how does a theist answer that? Note, if both God and evil are real, then how can Christians deny one or two and three follows from them? Uh, and the answer comes from St. Augustine, 400 AD, a, a brilliant Christian thinker. And uh, he was thinking about this uh, problem for many years because he was in a Manichaean cult that believed that good and evil were dual principles uh, in contests with each other forever. And Augustine said, I agree that God created all things, but I do not agree that evil is a thing. It's not a substance. It's not a reality in itself, but rather it's a lack or a privation or a corruption in a good thing. And if evil is not a thing, then of course the argument doesn't follow. Uh, the conclusion being that God did not create evil. 